awesome. You're back again, of yes. course, on a very weekly basis here. Yeah, sometimes we do two in a day. We do. Mm -hmm. We just don't release them mm -hmm. right away. Um, and I also just realized, too, that I forgot to post on Instagram last week that we had that interview with Owen. Oh, yeah. Um, but maybe I'll do that ahead of this one. Yeah. So okay. we did, um, we posted on Instagram our map. Yes, you guys, the map. The map was great. So that was like a one of our listeners' suggestions. And Melissa was like out doing something. And I'm like, does this map look okay? I think I'm going to do it. Like, this is a great idea. Yeah. It wasn't even like a good time of day to post. No. And it was still, you guys, like everybody was throwing out yeah. their cities. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. I forgot yeah. how many comments we had. I want to say like 150. It was a lot of comments. Lot. And it was also just that I love how brave people are. Yeah. And, and how was, many, like, Canada? Yeah, oh my I was going to say, we Canada, had, like, you guys have a ton of gay people. Yeah. <laughs> we had outside of the, the U.S. and right. everything. Like, it was really cool to see all the people that are, are listening. And, right. And keep on there. Like, if you didn't know about this, go to the map, plug in your city, and maybe we'll even repost it or how, somehow to, like... Get yeah. people to go back and do it more right. because if you missed that post, yeah, if you missed it, go back. Go back and to that go post. Back. Yeah, it's the big gay map. Yeah, comment on it, and you never just browse through the comments, and You'll you never see. know who you could connect with. I did right. see some people commenting back, like, "Yeah, I'm in Houston." Totally, too. there were a bunch. Like that's a great way, even if you're yeah. looking at that person and you're like, "Ah, oh, that's not my type." It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's community. It can building. be a community. It can be a friend, and someone to hang out with. They have people. You have people. Yeah. Bring the people. Totally, and that, we had an email from someone that was like. Yeah, this woman lives in Africa. Wow. Yeah. I'm okay. not going to read all the details of it, no. but I need to write her back. So if you're listening, I'm going to write you back. I saw your email. Um, so that, but then that just proves like the far reach that we have and the fact that this is like a universal thing, global like thing. global right. feeling that people are right. dealing with. Right. You're a thousand percent not alone in this. N not alone. Like, totally normal and brave for like putting down on the map that here's where I live and I'm going through this. Yeah. So. Um, and I can't imagine like had I when we were doing all this, if I had seen that, uh, I would have been like scouring. I would have town. too. And I would have honestly been a little intimidated to comment. Right. Um, Same. Honestly. And so to see everybody that was brave enough to comment and not have that fear behind it, right. I think is awesome. I do too. Um, but also those people that are fearful, just look through the comments and yeah. private message, direct That's message it. those people. Yep. Find, you see know? where you're, someone in your city, direct message them. Hey, I'm also in Yeah. Like Tell just have someone to text or yes. talk to you on the phone. Like I met random people. Like when I was first doing this, mm. I literally said to a friend, I was telling this really close friend of mine what I was going through and he's like, I have a friend who did the exact same thing. I'm hooking you guys up. Yeah. And you guys are going to be friends. And we are. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, well, and I, I really feel like it was like a major turning point in my process was right. coming to group and meeting you oh, guys. Oh, for sure. It was, you know, night and, night and day. Right. And you don't have to have a formal therapy group like we no. did. You can have your own, actually a different kind of group where you can maybe have wine or like really relax into it mm -hmm. would be even better. Do you remember after we all first met, we met for dinner yeah. near my old house yeah. <laughs> and like we barely knew each other. We sat down. You would think it would be so awkward and it wasn't. Yeah. It was like, oh my God, thank God you guys are here. Right. So it's in. like the only thing we have in common here is that we're all gay or questioning. You know? We're all gay and likely getting divorced. Right. Lean in. But, yeah. yeah. This is a soft place to land here. It is a total soft place. And it has been ever since. Yeah. And it's it's just amazing to me how helpful it's been. Yeah. Like, Community is everything. Um, so I really anyway. wish there was more therapy therapist led groups like that right. in different cities. But like I said before, I, the only one I found was in Chicago. And maybe what you do um, now is like if you have a common city then you hook together, throw together a dinner or throw together something easy. Nobody yeah. has to know that it's a, I mean, just do what we did. Yeah. Or a board game night. That's what a we're board doing. Game. I know. Tonight we're doing board games. Yes. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited too, actually. I love a game. I do too. I think it's going to be a good Do you know what we're playing? You know, um, God, I think we're going to play catchphrase and okay. then there's another game. I think it's just called questions. Okay. And it's, it's not it's, called questioning. No, it's not called questioning, but it does get awkward really fast. Okay. Like you get to know the people in the group really well, very quickly. Mm. So it sounds good. It's interesting. Um, yeah, so I have been dating kind of yeah. here and there. And I had a date the other night and we went to see a comedian in Atlanta. Um, this guy named Mateo Lane. 
I actually saw him last year at a comedy club in New York City. Okay. He's also on Netflix. Like, um, doesn't have like a full on Netflix special, but he's on like one of those like the stand ups. Okay. Thing. Yeah. Um, gay dude, like really funny. Right. Of course, he's a comedian. Um, well, when we're there, you know, I wanted to have seats up front. I wanted to buy like the VIP, but it was sold out. And oh, so okay. we just were like sitting in the middle, and he comes out, and two of those VIP seats are empty. And he's like, well, this is embarrassing. Like, these people didn't even bother to show up. <laughs> and I was like, we'll move up. And he was like, well, but wait, are you gay? And I was like, yes. You're yeah, yes. gay. Oh, my God. We're gay. gay. We're gay. And he was like, well, then come on up. And, like, so we got these seats. That's so awesome. Right up front for this Were you so scared he was going to pick on you? I was scared. Yes. yes. Like, I don't want to put myself in I that I really situation. was scared, but he did not. He, he did ask us if we were on a date. And I was like, yeah. But it was just so funny. I'm like, this is the first time ever I've had gay privilege. I know, because that does not happen yeah, very like, often. It I even do off. ever feel like, too, like, speaking of, like, the opposite of gay privilege, which is, like, when you're married and you've got, like, your wedding ring on, there's a feeling of, like, safety. Like, I can look like complete shit and go yeah, to the store and be like, whatever, married. I'm married. Here I am. Yeah. But now it's like, when you don't have a ring on, you have this feeling. I don't know. This, I'm sure, will go away, and it's ridiculous. I don't believe this. But I think sometimes, do people, like, see me without a ring and, like, feel sorry for I me? Mean, or guess, are they like, oh, she's not married. I, she's got I've those kind kids. of had a thought like that. Yeah. Like, oh, here I am with my two kids. Yeah. And, I mean, most of the time when I'm back in the suburbs, I look like hell. I know. You know, like. I know you do. <laughs> you know, I'm, just I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You've seen me. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's like no me. makeup, hair pulled up in a ponytail, yeah. hat, like, gym clothes. Yeah. Like, I just don't care. Like, no. I'm in mom mode. Right. And I'm not really doing much. And now you're like mom with no ring. Now I'm mom like, with no ring, them. sitting at the Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> oh, God. With both a... kids sitting next to oh, me. Oh, my God. Shit like... did not turn out right. <laughs> no. And I'm just like, Eating yeah. an onion flower. <laughs> so, so, yeah, sitting here by myself. Um, uh, there's my something dinner. about that ring. Yeah. And I don't, it's but it's, it's that That kind of brings up something we're going to talk about, too, is the marriage is an accomplishment right it's weird People view it as an accomplishment but why they shouldn't like anyone can find someone and get married it happens is every it the day, right person no. no it's a lot of the time it's not but half the time it's wrong <laughs> half the time 50 percent. <laughs> yeah exactly half the time um but like i was listening to something and it said like um, oh, he was such a good guy, you know, college graduate, had a great job, married. And it's just like, no, Why married does it? not belong no, on that it list does of not belong on that list of accomplishments. Like, you did not have to work that hard no. to land someone to no. marry you. Uh-uh. Like, or, I mean, yes, like, there's something to say for someone who's been married for a long time. But that's only if they're happily right. married. I mean, I'll tell the story for the hundredth yeah. time about... This grandson was at a funeral with his grandfather, who the, the grandmother had died. So the grandson is there with the grandfather at the funeral, very sad day. And everybody's kind of saying to the grandpa, like, oh, my God, you were married all these years. Like, what an accomplishment. And wow, she's gone. We're so sorry. We're so sorry. And later on, when they were alone, the grandfather basically said to the grandson, this is not an accomplishment at all. I was unhappy my whole life. And now she's gone, and I'm this old man, yeah. and essentially, like, this is the worst. Like, he literally looked at him and was like, please don't do this. Yeah. Because you just, I sold out my whole life for the accomplishment of staying married, and there's no shame in getting divorced. There just isn't. Yeah, there's not. There's it's, not. So often, it's the smart, healthy thing to it do. It is very often the smart and healthy thing to do. If you're in love, and of course, all marriages are going to have problems. Yeah. I'm not saying bail. I'm saying, though, that all marriages are not meant to last forever. And yeah. you know who said that? It's Glennon Doyle Melton. Yeah. Some marriages are, they serve their term, and it was a beautiful, wonderful thing. My marriage, I would say, yeah. that about, 100%. It was the best thing that ever happened. I would never trade it. I love that time. I yeah. evolved. He taught me a million things. He continues to. Yeah. But I was not supposed to stay married. Right. And that's okay. Yeah. And it's, it's taken me a long time to get to that yeah. spot. Right. Where it's like, I don't feel so bad about the adolescence that I miss, right. you know, with not being gay. I don't feel so bad about the fact that, you know, there was technically years wasted of my life. They're not because wasted it's like, at all. it's not wasted mm -hmm. because it's like, I wouldn't be where I am today if right. all that stuff didn't happen. And here's the flip side of that. So I dated a woman who right out, the first person I dated when I um, got divorced. 
And she basically says the exact opposite. She's like, I look at you and it's like, she's like, I have a little bit of anger. It's like, you didn't waste your life. You got the best, you got to have your cake and eat it too. Like almost like she was angry at me for getting to have that stability, children, yeah. um, time to get my feet. And then I got to now re reinvent. Hmm. I mean, it's not, that's not healthy either, but I'm saying yeah. there is another, yeah. there's and that, that kind view. of leads to another thing that I've read is that there are, um, like lesbians who've been in the game for their entire lives that are kind of like annoyed by the late in life lesbians, Yeah, you know, because it's like, who are you to say that you didn't know? Yeah. And then, you know, or you chose the easy path. You chose, I chose the easy path. Yeah. But I chose the easy path because I didn't even know there was another path. Exactly. So, you know, you do better when you know better. Yeah. That's just it. You're it's, only working with a certain like set of you, truths. When you, yeah. It's you can only do... Dr. Jamie. Dr. Jamie. You can only do so much <laughs> right. with the information you have. Exactly. And, yeah, it's like as much as it sucks to have, like... Because I feel like there's this push-pull on either side. It's like, how could you have gotten married if you were gay? You know, mm -hmm. how could you have done that? But right. on the other side, it's like, you're not allowed the space to even think that you're gay. No, I was never. And even my 75 year old mother will say, you never had yeah. the space. We didn't show you one person. In fact, we, we said some pretty nasty things about gay yeah. people in your upbringing. Mm -hmm. We are so sorry. There was never space. I went to a Catholic school yeah. all the way. I went to church three days a week. Um, I was told over and over that that's a sin. Yeah. There's absolutely no person in the world that would have come out yeah. in my upbringing. Right. And so it's like, so for people to be mad at you for getting right. married okay. when there's not the space to be gay, right. then what the fuck are you right. supposed to pick? What the fuck am I supposed to pick? Like, And so I picked exactly what I'm so excited and happy that I picked. Yeah. Because I love that time of my life. Right. I used to... I mean, I, the time home with my babies, my, um, a partner that literally when I was starting my business was yeah. like, how can I help you? I'm a business guy. Let me show you how to do some of this stuff. Like I feel so appreciative of all the love and support. He, even in my coming out, he yeah. was my numero uno ally. Yeah. And that's like, you, you'll have people like that who are right. amazing to you. But you're right. also going to have people that are shitty to you about right. it. Right. And then we can talk about bandwidth. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I, Which is like... A hard lesson in that one. Building a squad of people that are amazing for you. That you know how you feel when you walk away from people that make you feel good. And it's like if you build your squad like that and don't have room... For people that don't do that, you yeah. end up, you, you get better and better. Yeah. Because you only have so much bandwidth. Mm -hmm. You only have so many hours in the day. And my mind, I only have so many things I can think about. Yeah. Um, I don't want to add anybody who's not adding value. And I think it's good to, you know, especially if you're transitioning in this part of your life, you know, leaving your marriage mm -hmm. and coming out as gay, it's good to evaluate who is in your life and who right. is, who's lifting you up and who's bringing you down. Right. Because those people that are bringing you down are going to make this process even harder. Right. And you don't need them. Yeah. The truth is you don't need them. You said this on one of our podcasts, which is even if your parents, you're an adult. Yeah. Like, it's not like you still need them to put food on the no. table. And you don't so need their approval. You don't, they don't need approve, their approval. That's fine. Yeah. That's their problem, not yours. Exactly. Yes, it sucks because you do want that approval. Right. It would be very helpful. <laughs> right. But at you the same time, in other you can find it in other places. You don't have to cut off your parent either. No. You know, like I have a friend who's recently coming out. Her mom did not react the right. way that she had hoped. But she still has a relationship there with her mom. Right. You know, they're not talking about that one thing right. for now. Right. But there's still love there. Yeah. I know? mean, my girlfriend's brother is, um, it just doesn't agree. Like, will even, like, not, not doesn't necessarily even want his kids around yeah and um like because he's so anti-gay he's super catholic and she's like i i just we don't talk about it i love my brother and he's got a lot of shortcomings mm -hmm. but you know it doesn't have to be the end all. yeah and it's like to think too i guess from that person's perspective it's like we were so fearful like that um of being gay in a lot of right. ways that internalized homophobia that it didn't allow us to right. even come out in the same respect for them, they've got so much internalized homophobia right. that they can't accept you. And trying to balance that with my um, righteous 
my righteous loyalty issues <laughs> is hard because then my mind goes to you're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> I only have this, like, this team, the this squad I'm building. This is it. There's no, you're dead to me. Um, because I have this thing where I am like, my issue is like my loyalty. And I don't, it comes from my childhood. But it's like, I feel like he's somebody she is so tolerant of and sweet to that yeah. I probably wouldn't be. But yeah. Anyway. I mean, yeah. And like, you know, I think we both have like our own childhood stuff. We do. It's like, I have this terrible need to be liked. I know. And, what is that? You know? And it's like, I've spent my whole life... What are you going to learn? Nobody likes you. Nobody likes me anyway. So, <laughs> all my work. Oh, it's down the tubes. Um, but yeah, it's like I've worked so hard and I did so many things to, you know, please my parents. Right. And, and, and in fact, I internalized my gayness to please them. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and then I've continued to surround people around... Or have people in my life that are not that I need to be more like you, and I need to be more like you, <laughs> like <laughs> slashing the, the, the ties with some of these people that suck. I know, you know. I don't. Li- I'm a slasher. You are. I mean, you're scared. I know. You better watch. I'm it. like, I better bring her flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You better right. clean your um, kitchen. I don't think though that I'm mowing your lawn at three in the morning. My thing is like, I have a certain tribe. Okay, the people. Okay, I have tiers of people. I don't expect anything if you're tier two. Uh-huh. I expect zero. Okay. I just show up and be a nice friend. This is interesting. This but is if like you're a tier one, which you are tier family. one. If you're tier one. <laughs> if you're Elizabeth tier here. one, I don't care what the request is. You're tier one. And yeah. my people know it. I had I was walking with one of my best friends the other day. She's straight, like we've you know, I've had kids at the same time mm-hmm. and we've been friends forever. But she was like, you know, I got to say, like, I love that. Like, it's honestly, she's like, it's one of my favorite things because you don't ask me for anything absurd. Like, yeah. but I know exactly what is expected and I know you're going to do it for me. Yeah. Like, I know I'm your tier one mm-hmm. and I know you're mine. And it's like, I know that if at 3 a.m. Right. the carpet has to be vacuumed, it's getting vacuumed. It's getting vacuumed. I'm not vacuuming your I'm showing up. At 3 in the morning. You might do but it. But if you need to call me at 3 in the morning. I likely will. I will answer mm-hmm. and I will talk you off your ledge. Mm-hmm. I will absolutely. It's happened. It has happened. So. Um, it happens to the best of us. Right. It happens to me. Yes. So, a lot. Right. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing no. wrong with. Having tears. Having, having <laughs> a few tears in, in your therapy session. Um, you know, whatever. Yeah, we um, have the same therapist and she's so hard she's on us. She's just tore us both <laughs> pieces this week. Woo! I mean, it's almost like I literally every time I leave there and I'm like, she definitely hates me. She definitely hates me. I felt like today she kind of wanted to give me a hug. No, she never wants to give me a hug. Like, I, she's I, always also like when the clock is, she's like, and we're done. Oh, she will <laughs> shut down. I'm like, how do you even see the clock? Where's the clock? Where's the clock? Like, oh my God, it's so um, bad. God. Um, okay. I guess we, we skipped over one of our topics, which, which is, is the evolution of a relationship. Okay. Um, and... You know, I've, I feel like I've had both ends of how a relationship has proceeded with okay. the people that I've dated, where it's been, I've definitely had the bullet train, okay. full steam ahead, yeah. feeling feelings right off the bat, and then I've had the slow burn, you yeah. know, where it's like, let's chill. I will, can I make one comment, though? Your slow burn uh-huh. is still kind of burning. Uh, but, I mean, it tells me, though, that maybe there is something to that. Maybe there is. Maybe there is. And maybe it's, it's just timing. Right. You know? Um, but I'm, I'm proud of myself because it's like, I'm aware of those feelings and yeah. I'm, I'm aware of, you know, how I feel about the, the other people that I've been dating. Okay. I know. I'm just going to do this then. <laughs> I'm just going to do this. Get a little hot when talking about relationships. It's a little hot. I know what's coming. You're enjoying this a little too much. This is not an episode about sex, Allie. It's about to be. I'm about to flip the script. I'm about to flip the script. <laughs> Did, you, um, did your box of toys come? My box of toys came. I want to go through them with you. <laughs> Show you. You can tell me what they are. I can give a tutorial. Oh, God. No. Okay, so the evolution of a relationship. Yeah, I so think, let's talk about yours. Like, Yeah, so the one that I'm... The like, one that you're currently in. And I, and, I mean, I guess you had your other one that moved pretty quickly, too. Yeah. Your others think, moved quickly. Yeah, I think... Um, I don't adhere to that. Like mm-hmm. I, in my mind, like the advice I would give people when they're coming out is to date a lot of people. We talk about touch points. Yeah. Figure out what you want. But in but this, it's, okay, it's hard. Continue. It's very yeah, hard. It's very hard. You get excited. You get very excited. But in this relationship, um, I think we met and I had already met her before, 
So I was kind of already intrigued a little mm -hmm. bit because I knew so much about this woman. And then we met and had, I felt like this just amazing chemistry right off the bat. Um, I was dating, not like exclusively, but I was dating someone else that I was interested in. And, um, but I felt myself just wanting to talk to her. And you know, we laugh about like, these lesbians don't have jobs. <laughs> yeah. Because all you do is text all day, every yes, day. Yes. So um, this lesbian felt like, I literally would think, does she work at all? Like, <laughs> when is she working? Because we would be texting back and forth all day. And I work from home and I would literally be like, oh my God, I'm gonna, I can't help myself. Yeah. Like I'm in the rabbit hole of texting. Right. So um, that went on, we were just friends, really. But uh -huh. both of us, I think in the back of our minds knew that like, this is awesome. Yeah. And so it was exciting and fun and then, Eventually, it got to a point that I was like, I really don't even want to keep dating this other yeah. person, you know, or date anyone for that matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was still kind of open. And um, so we went out one night as like a real date and it was just totally amazing. Yeah. So it went from there. And then I would say it's at the six month mark is when you start to kind of see a few things that are going to be hard. Yeah. And we kind of both said, really more her, because she's, I just think, more evolved in that way, was yeah. just like, we have to get so vulnerable and like have these really hard conversations and get our feelings hurt, but also just be so raw. Yeah. And so that's what we try to do. And now... Um, I mean, you guys are approaching a year, right? Yeah. Like, it'll be It'll be March. a year, yeah. Wow. And so, that's like... 18 years in lesbian 18 years. and we kind so. of like without doing it we were together all the time mm -hmm. pretty soon but I mean that's just so common you so know common. The, the texting non-stop that we're together as much as we possibly can be um and like I guess my I've been really busy lately so the, the people that I have been talking to I have had those like let's text all the yeah. time kind of situations but for me to actually have the time to go and hang out lately has been really difficult right um, like I was literally like fitting in, like, let's go for a walk for an hour. I know. When you say yeah. these dates, I'm like, these dates sound super lame. Because I don't have time. Right. Can you listen? I'm going to be at the grocery time. from 6 to yeah. 7 15. That's be there. literally what it's like. Meet me at Publix. I mean, I'm trying to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> I did work a shit ton last month. So, um, um, okay. You know so, I mean, I guess it's just those feelings. What brought that up is those feelings are so intense at the beginning when you're really yeah. feeling it. But I think you, the therapist kind of pointed out, those feelings are in you. Yes. It's really, this person's bringing it out of you. Yeah. But it's not necessarily that, the person. The person. Right. It's in me. It just needs to match up with the right timing with and the, the right person. Right. Um, but yeah, that's like. Like, do you believe in chemistry as far as like, like sometimes I wonder, do I fall, did I fall for her? Because really there's this like chemical, we're clearly very attracted to each other. Yeah. Clearly we have. We, we share the same values, we're very similar. But it's like, I was also in a really good mood that night. I was open, I was, yeah. like there are things about my life when she came along yeah, that were that lined were up for that. Yeah, and I think I do think that that has a lot to do with it, the, in, in feeling that mutual pull right. between each other too. Because right. I've definitely felt that with people. Right. Where it's like you meet and you know, you just feel it right yeah. away. Right. Um, and if you don't feel that and you have felt it, it's kind of difficult to move forward with a relationship. Right. So that's true. But do you think, what if you met the right person, but you were just kind of in a, I mean, that's also true too. Are you affectionate in front of your ex-husband? I haven't really had anyone around him that way, okay. in that way. Um, yeah, I don't think I have been. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an interesting question because it's like once, I guess I, I don't feel like weird about it. Especially, Especially now, because he's moved on. He's, he's moved on, on and yeah. like he's been in a relationship longer than I have. Right. We're actually talking about, ugh, get this, for my brother's getting married. Oh, brother, wow. In October. And he wants to get married at the beach. And like my family wants to use the condo that I right. co own with Tom and his dad. And I'm like, okay, that's way too many people to put in a two bedroom condo. Yeah. I'm not staying there. Right. You guys can stay yeah. there. Like my family can. Right. But no. I'm going to bring a date I, at the hotel. I'm like, 
I cannot. Right. And my mom's all offended. And she was like, is this because, are you afraid that everyone's going to make fun of you? Like the gay stuff? And I'm like, no. Like it's I personal really just space. Don't. Right. I agree. I hate staying up with people. Um, but my mom was like, oh, I really want Tom to come to the wedding. Of course. And I was like, well, yeah, I do too. Yeah. You know, he's still part of our family. And so I told him that. I was like, you know, I really want you to come. And he was like, oh, okay. Like I will. I'd love to. And now we're talking about get him and I getting a condo together <laughs> with his girlfriend and all three kids. I love it. And I'm like, I'd rather do that than go stay of with course. my kids. Hell yeah. So, totally. I relate to yeah, that. And yeah, hopefully I'll have a date at that point. It's like October. You'll have a date anytime you want a date. Well, you know, my fair. she said that to me today. She was like, she's like, you're, you don't have to be alone. Right. She's like, you could go to a bar tonight and meet someone and you wouldn't be alone. Mm-hmm. But the fact is, it's like, I'm not just going to go to the bar and meet someone. It's not right. like I'm just going to right. you know, come. Right. So, <laughs> you, come. You, come here. Right. Come, literally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, though, that I think the right girl, you've had, a, there's been a lot of women around, but I just don't know that your mind was in that yeah. space yet. I think that's just it. You know, it's like, you've got to let go and make peace with other things in order to move forward. And make room. Make bandwidth. Make room, Yeah. Yeah, and her therapist literally today told her the exact same advice. She changed one word. I say bandwidth, <laughs> the therapist said space. Um, and that's exactly it. You have yeah. to make room for these people. Yeah. And let go of the bullshit. Let go of the fucking bullshit. Yeah. Um, I agree. I am 100% on board. Right. I, might, I want to check your phone. No, you're this. not. <laughs> <laughs> no one's looking at no, your fucking phone. No, you're not. You're <laughs> not. Um, yeah, so no one's allowed to look at have we solved everything? Yeah, totally. I'm fully healed and I'm fully uh, healed and ready to date. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm actually really good with the whole like, I, I, I guess over the course of the past few weeks, you know, I've dated, I've talked to people, I still am talking to a few people, but I just don't care. Yeah, you know, I deleted the dating apps, yeah, mainly because someone was on there looking for a third and they didn't have that. Man- Directly posted on my profile. Oh, Did I tell you about this? Yes, that's so weird. It was like, and they were on like Bumble or Hinge, like one where you're supposed to be looking for a freaking relationship, yeah. not for a third. Like stick to Tinder or like the, there's apps for that. What, did they want a third to be in the relationship no, or a third just so to in her with? defense, she just was looking for someone for herself. But even so, I was irritated because she didn't list that clearly that on she her was profile. Married. There was a picture of her and a guy and it said, me and my best friend. And like yeah. we match, start talking, and then I was like, "Is that your best friend or boyfriend?" And she was like, "Husband," and that's when I was like, "I was like, you know, it's hard enough dating. Yeah, like you're just making it more difficult to right. move through. Right. And like she was rude to me about it, and I just was like, "Fuck this." Yeah. It's I didn't. Really I didn't continue to engage in the conversation. She doesn't deserve that Mm-mm. interaction from me. And then I was like, oh, "I'm deleting all these apps because I'm right. over it." I also, like, I have a really hard time being on there and, like, looking at someone and not, I guess, what's the right word? I'm trying to gauge what they're like in person. Yeah, you know? that's what I said. It's a 3 It's almost like I want to meet immediately. Yeah. You know, because I don't want to develop this, like, what I think of I know. in my that's head. That's happened to me. Right. Um, like, one of the girls that I'm talking to now... Like, she and I met really quickly after connecting, which I really liked, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like I didn't have to build it no, up in my head. you didn't build a story she like. she's, yeah, this, she's And then that. feel, like, yeah. let down or whatever. Which, it was yeah. just, like, Which is inevitable. To, yeah. Right. <laughs> which is inevitable. It's inevitable if you've had a month to build someone up. If I'm texting with you all day for yeah. a month, well, yeah. in my head, you are a rocket scientist, you're a great mom, you're all these things, Yeah. and you're probably exactly the kind of vibe I want, and then I meet you, and you're like, And not. it's not there, yeah. and then what? It's like, then you guys have spent all this time, right. and then someone's giving their feelings for For sure. Me or the other person, you know? And you're like, it's not going to be and me. it's not going to be me. <laughs> Kidding. I've had my feelings hurt plenty. That's Trust so me. Um, I'm like so sensitive now. Really? You know? Yeah. Oh. It's ridiculous. Even like, with all the building up I do of you. I know. <laughs> but even so, it's just like, I didn't care when I dated guys. I know. Like being rejected by a guy is like, whatever. Yeah. Get out of here. By a woman, I'm just like, What's wrong can you take the me? knife out of my mouth? Exactly. <laughs> like, um, um, I don't think. I, 
I think that's normal. I think it's like I, I tell my kids, I just said this to my girlfriend's son. If you're learning how to ride a bike and you're not falling, then yeah, you're not really. That's true. If you go skiing and you don't fall once, yeah. all that just told me about you is you're super cowardly. Yeah. Because you're obviously not really you're going not really forward. trying. Yeah. That's very true. And that can yeah. be applied to a lot of things. It really can. You know, um, even in like trying to better yourself, you know, as in a, any as, way. Like, yeah. My like you're going to have hiccups sometimes. You're going to fall major. down. Like, oh my God. Up. We have huge hiccups that are, I, yeah, it's comical. But yeah. it's also like, you know, you're taking these risks and mm -hmm. um, that's how you grow. Yeah. You got to get your, your nose in you there gotta fall. before you get a yes. Yeah. So. For sure. And it just like teaches you too. Like you develop this. If you if you use it the right way, you don't get more scared. You get more emboldened. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I was when we were had that thing about would you walk up to a table? Yeah. And um, I mean, I would say two years ago, I would have been like, hell no. I really don't think I would have a problem now. Really? I don't think it would bother me. It because it's like the worst the cases. They're all laughing at me. Okay, you guys suck. And then I go back to you guys. Yeah. And then you say, they're not laughing. And then I'm drinking free all night because you feel bad for right. me. Right. That's true. That's true. Yeah. There I don't, like, I don't, I think it's like you get to where you're, I don't know, you re you realize that the reward is so good when you live in that way. Yeah. I agree. And I don't want to dog on, like, the dating apps. Like, I know that, like, in a lot of areas, yeah. that's, like, the only yeah. option. And I think it's a great and option. And most people do meet that way. Yeah. It that might is, take a while. That's very true. Yeah. I think, um, you know, that is probably majority of the way that people meet right um but I just for me in this stage of my life I feel like it's not right for me right well, I'm saying this I'm probably going to download something that I no but you know what not, it is is we talked about this is like you get when you're scrolling and you're going through a divorce and your life is changing and you're on these apps there's a feeling of like a little bit of like a depression of like mm. this is and it was upsetting you yeah like you were getting like discouraged so to me it's yeah, like it was discouraging. it wasn't bringing value anymore yeah yeah, it's like it helps to a degree because it's like, wow, look at all these people out there. Right. And then after a while, it's like, why aren't there any people out there? Right. So, yeah. And I, and I would just really prefer to meet someone organically. Too. You are all the time, so, too. So that's the other beautiful yeah. thing. We've got some fun stuff planned. Yeah. Um, and then for also people that um, we've had people write in about being over 50 and like it's oh, so hard. Yeah. I was just wanted to point out, like tomorrow night we're throwing a 50th birthday party for a late in life friend of ours who's yeah. now in a committed relationship, who's so happy. Mm -hmm. They have a whole squad of other like 50 plus yeah. lesbians they hang out with. Like it's a thousand they're percent out there. they're out there. They're out there. And I think, you know, I getting onto the those dating sites like like Match, that mm -hmm. definitely has a lot older crowd. Okay. Um, also, I don't know so much about like Bumble and Hinge, but those are definitely more for people that are looking for relationships. Mm -hmm. So I would st try to go with those if you're like right. over 50, you know, don't do the Tinder thing. Right. Or like to get the meetup thing going. Yeah. Yeah. That you would know? be great. But, um, and there were women in our group that were like attractive, cool girls that were approaching 50. Yeah. So it's not That's like, the thing. It's like. People think that turning 50 is like so old now, it's not and I right. really don't feel that way. I don't. I think it's changing drastically. It better be, because I'm 45. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to be better change. It better fucking better change. change. <laughs> but it um, has. I mean, look at, look at her and her girlfriend. And yeah. They look amazing. And her girlfriend's 50 plus and yeah. was single before they met. Exactly. So it's like they're out there for sure. Yeah. Like, don't be discouraged no. if you're like... My girlfriend older. was single, and she's awesome. Yeah. For a couple of years. I mean, she was dating, but she wasn't... You're single. I'm single. Like, I always try to think about that. Like, there, there's lots of cool single girls. There are. Um, you just got to find them. Yeah, and I don't even think it's that hard when you're open to it. Yeah. They're everywhere. I, I mean, church, I hate to, like, do the church thing again, but we went back this past week, and right after the service, this lesbian couple comes up to my girlfriend and I and is like, listen... We always throw a brunch for new people. Mm -hmm. Like, can you guys come over? And I thought, like, they're right there. We didn't go because we had the kids and we had a million other things. But I was thinking, like, I bet if we had to go to the brunch, it's other gay women. Yeah. But so, is there a lot of couples going to the church? Or? Some, but there's a lot of single people there. I guess that's Jesus another there. good place to think about meeting people is church. Church. You know, finding a gay-friendly church. Yeah. Because um, if it's gay-friendly, it tends to be, like, our church... It's pretty gay. Yeah. I mean, I would say when you look around, I would even venture to say it's mostly gay. Yeah. That's interesting because I really had not thought of that as like a meeting place. 
because I don't go to church. But that's like a great idea. Yeah, you know? and I didn't go until this one is right next door. And yeah. I love Susanna, who was on our show right, back in Lisbon. Right. She's awesome. And so I just started going. And now it's like we both like, we walk yeah. there. I mean, there's nice gay people there. Mm -hmm. Like it's so nice to like settle in together and... Like, listen, and even actually her six-year-old, we have our little ones just yeah. with us. And, um, like, her son, I was laughing. I'm like, he was, like, totally engaged through the whole thing. Really? Yeah. That's and, of course, awesome. I have Reed, who's, like, trading Pokemon cards, oh, looking around. God. I'm like, dude. You know, that's why my parents stopped going to church mm -hmm. when I was, like, five. Because I was just, like, not having it. And, like, oh, not God. paying attention, not sitting still. Oh, like, mine would have never stopped. That's when you double down, mine would have said. No. We went I, the I broke them. They broke them. <laughs> Five years old, I broke them. It's like, we're not doing this anymore. Mm -mm. And I've barely done bad since. Right. Look at me, I'm just a heathen. Yeah. Um, anyway. Absolutely. Um, we have appreciated some of the reviews that we've gotten. We've yes. gotten some on um, Apple, which have been really amazing. It's so um, good. And yeah, that helps build us up. I think it also brings us up in the ranks when you like search for gay podcasts. Yeah, so, so definitely comment and like it helps so much. Yeah, um, yeah. Follow us on Instagram, um, our Facebook page, which is still like non-existent, but it's there. Yeah, and Twitter. Um, I don't have Facebook either. You know, I deleted the Facebook app the other day because I was so irritated by everyone pissed off by the Super Bowl and Nancy Pelosi ripping a sheet of paper in half. That I was oh, just yeah. like, I can't do this. I right. can't fucking do it. Right. So I've deleted the the app. I'll get on like on like if I'm on a desktop computer, I'll get on and like check it. But I'm like, it's gotten too, too opinion-y. Right. The only reason I would do it, I've never had Facebook. The only reason that I would would be to learn about like you guys are on that Facebook page. Yeah, like, that is that's just it. And someone said that to me at work yesterday because we were talking about how fun TikTok is to be on. Um, and she was like, I really only get on Facebook now to check events. Yeah. And that's like so true. It's like a good way to like organize events. So I'm just going to trust that you'll tell me. So I'll just tell you what was okay. going on. So you're going to play flag football with me. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I can dominate flag football. Dude, then sign up. Do you know up. why? Because I am fast. Then sign up. Really? You want to? How old? What's the age range? I don't want to play with a bunch of 25 year olds. I mean, no, there's people like my age playing okay. and like older. Yeah. Okay. I can find you. Remember, um, did you meet Janie? I can't remember if you met her or not. Okay. I'll show you her picture, but okay. she plays. Okay. Um, Where do you play? Um, the practice the other day was over at Central Park, but I think the games themselves are going to be at Silverback. Park. Oh, yeah, that's for Tatum. That's where my daughter practices. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's every Saturday. Okay. And it's like a gay football thing. It's a gay flag football. So is it all girls or is it? No, it's guys and girls. Okay. But from what I understand, the guys do let the girls play. Like, uh, and it's not going to yeah. be one of those things where they're like, oh, yeah, go run that way, and they'll ignore you. Like, okay, they're actually going to, like, pass it to you. I so. hope so. Yeah. Okay, I thought maybe it was, like, an all-lesbian team. That's what I thought, too, and that's what I was hoping for, but, yeah. Beggars okay. can't be choosers. True. So, Unless you start your own. It's true. I did do that, kind of, and started my own sorority. Really? College. Yeah. What was it called? Kicks. Oh, my God. K-I-X. <laughs> oh, my God. I thought I knew everything. Oh, yeah. I had stickers and t-shirts. Wow. I was like, fuck your sororities. Right. Here's mine. It's much cooler. I just it did it so that I could um, have my own inter intramural sports teams. Okay, I love it. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. We need to do that. Apply that to the gay. Maybe we should. Yeah. We can come up with a gay a sorority really gay sounding name. <laughs> so you don't have to tell people it's a gay event. Mm -hmm. You're going to the kicks event. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. That's hilarious. Doesn't seem so gay now, does it? Um, all right, we better wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. All right, good times. Good emails, times. Yes, comment. Stuff. Do all the things. Um, thank you guys for listening. So many great people reaching out, yeah. and so many people have sent us topics that are really good. Yeah, we probably so, didn't get to them today, but no, no, oh, today well. was we will. random. <laughs> okay. All right. See you guys. Bye. Good stuff. Um, yeah, you should totally play football. What time's the thing? I think the games are like...